Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, I feel very, very privileged and happy to be part of these sessions, and I want to thank our beloved God, our beloved Father, who's been merciful, who's been gracious enough to extend these sessions. We are dealing through this very important subject about Jesus' second coming. And not only that, we have done so many sessions and recordings are available in the playlist. Every single word that you would hear from our channel is the voice of God. Because in this channel, there is no other propaganda, there is no other advertisement, there is no other marketing. Of anything else, look at our ministry, send us offering, and oh, we are so powerful. Come and receive the anointing oil and this and that. No, it's all about Jesus. We preach and teach the word of God, and we help people to lead their lives in their life of salvation, or in the pathway that leads them towards salvation. Salvation is a very, very important concept which has been completely misapprehended by all the people on earth, I would say, not only in Christendom. Yeah, Salvation is nothing but you need deliverance from sin. That is called a salvation. Yeah, why, why you think mankind belonging to any religion, belonging to any tribe, any culture, any practices, any doctrine, any, any tradition, they have their own beliefs. Have you noticed? Month over month, year over year, they repeat those practices. Why? Because you're confident of one thing. Hey, there is sin in me. In Tamil, in Sanskrit also, parigaram. Parigaram is a very, very important word. Right? What does parigaram means? It is nothing but I need to sacrifice something that really cost me so much, which is going to take away or cleanse all the sins of my heart, of my mind, of my body, right? And once they go through this parigaram or this sacrifice that costs them something, how do they do this parigaram is because um, it is through multiple ways. How do they do is they sacrifice their money and they feed a thousand poor children on a specific day. Or they go, and, they go and visit orphanages and they donate a big money. Or probably they go and help people clearing the hospital bills. Uh, or they go and you know help a person who is battling for life. Many, many things. Thinking this help what they are extending or you know kind of um, this help what they are providing to those that are needy right is going to cleanse away their sins then why are you doing the same thing next year why are you doing the same thing next month because you definitely know that it is not cleansed your inner conscience will tell you clearly your, your soul, the inner person will tell you very clearly. You still will go through a kind of a satisfaction, but that is very temporary. After a few weeks, you will be back to the same state. After a few months, you will be back to the same depression, same sickness, same curse, same bondage, same failure, same mistake, same error. Back to the same prostitute's house, back to the same alcoholic or a rack shop. Yes? Back to the same habit of lying tongue. Back to the same habit of receiving bribery from your hands. Back to the same habit of killing, murdering people. Probably you're a gangster. But then there is an inner conscience that is pricking you consistently. You go there. It's like, you know, people go out for a holiday, right? To relax. Take, it, take time off from work and spend time with your family and relax. Because you have been working, working, running. And it's like a mechanical job and uh, uh, you're, you're so tired and you need a break. That's why you go for routing. It's become like that. <laughs> yeah? You're so sick and tired of 
battling with his sin and sinful deed and that is what is chasing you but there are other category of people who don't agree with this god tradition this and that what do they do <laughs> they end up committing suicide what else they kill themselves because they are very confident nothing is going to help them because they don't believe in religion they don't believe in culture they don't believe in tradition they don't believe in bible they don't believe in jesus and uh, yeah they kill themselves that's the reason go and inquire a person who is in depression it is some sin that he has committed really pushed him to the depression or it is because of someone commit, committing a sin against them is causing them into depression in either ways you got to be an overcomer you got to overcome forgiving others you got to overcome forgiving yourself you got to overcome bringing that course correction in your life right for example if the sinful deed is of you through you you need to go and ask for forgiveness and forgive yourself first of all why because jesus died for this very reason to forgive your sins and my sins even on the cross he looks down and he did not judge people rather he asked god to forgive those people why because they knew not what they are doing father they knew not forgive them right and this jesus also extended that same uh, saying on the cross for everyone those that believe in 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 my name they will be they will be going through this remission of sins and cleansing process and forgiveness of sins and salvation they enter into the life of salvation acts 238 you read acts 1118 you read 1 john chapter 1 verses 7 to 10 you read 1 corinthians 620 you read all these things you will understand that jesus took our place on the cross although he died as a lamb without blemish he did not die as a sinner right but sins of the world were cast on him therefore he was killed in our place in your place and my place therefore you need not be in depression you need not live in that guilt anymore you need not run to that mountain the valley you need not run be- you know behind this sacrifice sacrificing a bull or a sheep or a goat oh that blood cannot cleanse you you will end up doing that even next year and the year after that and after that you few years down the line few decades down the line you will be dead and gone your children will be practicing the same tradition after that they will be dead and gone their children will be practicing but what happens the generations generations after generations they continue to live in guilt yeah and people counter attack when we make this statement then why are you having this communion the communion is not to remind ourselves of our guilt that we went through but it is to get reminded of the sacrifice on the cross and we partake in the lord's table introspecting our original state of mind our spiritual status and if there is any blemish we confess we ask for god to forgive us and we have we make it, we 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 take we take an oath and we make a decision that we will never ever repeat that sin why because it's insulting the blood covenant that's the reason we repeat it's not that we are not able to overcome yes of course there are many christians who are not able to overcome uh, that you know the, the reason is because they have taken this communion for granted very it's not a complicated theory but the devil made it very complicated look complicated and that's why you see the mankind is diversified and scattered in multiple directions and they're running behind many many people many many uh, places and uh, they visit so many places they go on a pilgrimage trip and all that including christians why are you going on a pilgrimage pilgrimage trip visiting this uh, what people go to holy city bangalore and all that even i love to go, sorry no i'm sorry i mean bangalore holy city jerusalem and they go and they get baptized in the river jordan and stuff like that and after you come back what in what way it matters tell me your life don't change yeah your mindset doesn't change you are still in the depression you are still in the bad habit you are still in the bad culture you are still a gossiper you are still a murmurer it doesn't really matter no i like to go there because i like visiting historical places yeah i would like to go to italy and rome and you know why why not there you know they have uh, preserved lot of things yeah the crown of thorns is preserved and kept in italy i want to go and mean i know to see that in rome well i go for a reason uh, 
and not with a belief that if i visit such a such place i am going to go through a change and all that yeah that's called as holiday break you know <laughs> yes i like holiday breaks once in 30 40 five days i like just going for a short visit somewhere and come back meet people have some get together have fun not with a not with a bottle of liquor not like that i have fun in the sense fellowship i like talking to people i like meeting them i like blessing them with the money with the money that i have what do i get them i don't want to disclose but i like blessing people i like spending some time it's not about i i myself and me once in 30 40 five days uh, window i go and meet that's a holiday break that's nice but will that bring any change in me no because why i have not made any decisions as i'm talking to people it's a fellowship it's it's nice it, it's very relaxing right some people make uh you know i mean they also take holiday break but their break is with that prostitute in an island uh sharing the same bed without their wife's knowledge in the name of business trip and all that i don't do that you shouldn't be doing that some people also take a break where they freak out with their friends and go there and booze and then on the way they get killed in an accident that's not the kind of break i'm talking here but even those breaks brings no changes it's it, it's going to going to help you relax a bit your system needs rest that's why god declared that day as sabbath day where god himself put together as a, as a model right that he himself took that rest rest is needed for human body and likewise break is needed for human system but that doesn't bring any change people go who are going on a pilgrimage trip it's more or less like a fellowship trip it's more or less like a holiday trip not saying all most but very few people i really pity them they have a belief if i go to that temple if i go to this church if i go to that place if i go to this uh, you know uh, place where uh, so and so saint lived and all that and i am going to make a visit and somehow i will feel very very spiritual and i will be free of bondage and all that maybe it's true but it will not be long lasting few days down the line you will be back to the same old way of living your life come to god seek the lord from the secret place your room is enough your prayer hall your prayer room is enough may you go sit and talk to god and god is able to listen god is able to bring the change in your life god is merciful god is gracious you don't have to run between this place to that place a warm welcome to episode number 2 where jesus christ is returning to earth very very soon for the second time how are you able to make this statement very confidently yes that's what we are reviewing for many many months now i mean more than a year yeah close to 275 sessions have been already given uh, episode 1 we spoke through eschatology the seven events that happens immediately after the second coming of jesus it's all available there 110 sessions available there in the playlist episode 2 we kicked off many months ago yeah and there are 14 events jesus left behind as evidences when all of these are fulfilled you will know looking at the nature of the world looking at the nature of the people looking at the behavioral pattern of the people looking at the way how the world is running towards an orchestrated and their belief system and stuff like that all these are clearly documented in the bible because jesus prophesied and the disciples asked him uh, how do we know that your second coming is very near and jesus left behind these 14 events as evidences we are on the fifth event episode 3 and 4 also we are uh, planning to do its pipeline uh, it's about the great tribulation as a, as a, as a series we would like to uh, uh, you know depict what happens exactly during those seven years of uh, the devil's regime and revelation 8 and 9 about six trumpets we will also talk through that in episode number 4 okay let's come back to episode 2 and fifth event wars violence lawlessness earthquakes and natural catastrophes um famine and poverty famine and drought leading to poverty disease epidemics and sicknesses we are done with these four events we are on the fifth event right now the rise of a power that's associated with fundamentalism and aggression this is a very important event why because you can link this event to anything you can link it to a tradition you link it to a belief you link it to a uh, to politics you link it to diplomacy you link it to um, uh, certain entrepreneurs certain rich people's behavior 
you know how tactical they are tactical behavior tactical attitude you can link it to anything understood what i'm saying it's a belief you believe the language you speak is the most prominent language the best language in the world that's called as fundamentalism hmm. why because you have learned to appreciate only your language you have learned to degrade or you have you have made a choice to degrade others in the sense look down on others you're not a humble brother you're not a humble sister you're arrogant you're stubborn you're very proud in what way you think person who speaks another language is inferior to you or for, for example the dress code yeah coat and suit and boots and all that uh, then you are looking very posh but you look down on another person who wears a dhoti uh, you 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 really don't pay that respect why because look at his clothes because why you believe in certain thing or you are um, bound to certain belief which you alone believe and you judge people based on that belief that's called as fundamentalism fundamentalism could be classified as constructive and destructive fundamentalism all this all this time whatever i have been explaining is destructive fundamentalism constructive fundamentalism also builds a person how like how jesus he treats everyone in the same way his love is same towards all not a man of favoritism not a man of partiality constructive fundamentalism not only that he spoke about salvation he spoke about redemption he spoke about deliverance he spoke about liberalization he spoke about the destiny kingdom of heaven and how to reach there what are the ways the laws and commandments instructions are given as doctrines in the bible constructive fundamentalism it builds a person it is the hope to the hopeless it is the confidence and trust to the person who is in depression distress disappointment and frustration you're all with me and aggression can be also classified as positive and passive aggression passive is nothing but negative aggression negative aggression is the attitude of a demon you will be a gossiper murmurer grumbler complainer finger pointing people accusing people abusing people avenger and um, re revengeful attitude all these things whereas positive aggression will always teach you to forgive people share all that the, even that little you you have you will share with people you will be a cheerful giver you will be no, you will not be a miserly uh, you a person with a miserly attitude your behavioral pattern will determine whether you are disciple of christ if you are a disciple in christ you will inherit the qualities of christ and you are a person of positive aggression very aggressively you will go and help people you will do good to the people even you are going to be bet even you are going to be threatened that you will be killed <laughs> you don't mind about it jesus to the extent of laying down his life he went across the ends of the earth and he did good to the people acts 1038 says that all right and right now we are reviewing passive aggression as a concept in a previous session we reviewed from the book of proverbs 29 verses 20 21 and 22 hidden anger can show up purposeful unfaithfulness in commitments leaving another person kind of you know um, uh dropped or ditched or betrayed it may foster little bits of chaos in other people's environments it might reveal itself intentional um procrastination procrastination for the sake of keeping others uh, or shaking their balance right in doing a task poorly because the individual did not want to do it in the first place first place right it can manifest itself see you certain times you don't want to do what you want to do but you end up doing that what is it called as carnality the power of carnality and that's called as negative aggression so these things may seem minor initially but consider what would be what it would be like to live with a being with his attributes it could be your own husband it could be your own wife with negative passive aggression when we, when we consider that the heart is behind the anger yeah whether obvious or not obvious we can see why god says that those who practice such things those who make a habit of anger on its cousins cousin brothers who are they malice wrath and all these things a rude behavior arrogance they will never fit into god's family in contrast Jesus says that his disciples are those who love one another they look out for the well-being of others even if 
it requires personal sacrifices they will not think twice to do that such love does not behave rudely I want to know more about love love does not edify uh, sorry love edifies love does not puff up 1 corinthians 13 you read does not seek its own it is not provoked it does not think evil that's called as true love and does not rejoice in iniquity and that's exactly what we had been reviewing in our previous sessions right and uh, we will continue our meditation on the negative aggression and how it impacts a person today we will be talking from the book of first kings and we'll talk about king ahab a bit a little background on king ahab most of us know that he is a king of israel and and he was biased with his wife jezebel jezebel is the daughter of a paganite king and a paganite priest and that was itself a bad decision that shows ahab's um attitude towards his god yeah he says that i am jealous god i will not allow you giving that praise and respect shown towards some other gods or goddess or some other men or you know whoever it may be i am jealous god and very be very careful about this huh? you have you love your wife more than god i'm sorry to say this god is going to deal with that right you to ensure that you have that focus on god why because if you love your wife more than god your wife is that idol and that idolatry could separate you from the love of god here on earth and permanently you will lose your position to enter inside the kingdom of heaven and god doesn't want that to happen and that's the reason he brings that course correction he inflicts your wife with certain sickness probably your husband with certain sickness or you love your children more than god i don't even want to make that statement it's really scary isn't it i'm not saying you shouldn't love your wife your children your husband your parents your your, your brothers and your sisters your brother in law some people say everything nothing more than my brother nothing more than my sister certain siblings are so attached please that love should never be superior to the love that you have for your god it should be inferior to that love you have for your god and that was the problem with king ahab not only that he was a transgressor because according to the law you you clearly cannot take wives from any other tribe or community canaanite jebusites and all that right and this lady was a paganite not only that he surrendered his life she was actually running the kingdom she was actually running that home she was actually running the palace yeah they almost like he is playing wife's role and she is playing husband's role that was ahab's position right surrender certain men you see at home yeah, please ask my wife she decides everything <laughs> brother i'm not saying wife shouldn't have a say however it should be a joint it's it should be a collaborative dis- decision or a discussion that's when it's a balanced life sometimes you may disagree with your wife and you tell that politely sometimes wives you disagree with your husband tell it politely and husbands not always you are right wives not always you are right sometimes your decision may not be the best and pay attention listen to your wife or ask for time give me two days honey let me think through it and let and i'll come back to you nothing wrong right and uh, that two days of time one week of time obviously is going to help you think but don't be biased and i can never go wrong they in that sense don't even ask for time because why even if you take a million years from now you're going to be the winner why because you have decided that you want to be the winner and you are not going to lose that's not the way how you should decide things right whereas here you see that itself there is a you know passive aggression playing its role and this is little background about king ahab he is always a man of negative aggression gone on the complete side of negativity king ahab of israel demonstrated passive aggression aggressive behavior passive aggressive behavior when he coveted the vineyard of a neighbor and was denied its purchase this is the title we are going to review so much to that as if the kingdom was not enough as if the riches in his palace was not enough as if his love for his wife you love your wife more than god fine 
You're happy about it, right? You're more happy about it, right? What's your problem? You have everything you want. Now, there was a guy living next to him uh, in his, his palace or something like that. And he was very much uh, fond of his vineyard. Greedy. Attitude of, uh, you know, that greed. Hunger for that money. You will never leave any small players. Certain businessmen you see, they're always going to eye up on the small scale industries. Grab this guy. Grab this guy. Grab this guy. You know, imposing pressure and sending politicians to their homes. Sending IT raids to their homes and because they have everyone in their pockets and this small little fellow is not able to survive and whatever rate this guy demands he will sell off and he will go and live in his hometown or something like that you know how many small scale industries have been shut down because of these big players god is their witness god is the witness and god will hear the cry and not only applies to these entrepreneurs and all that. I'm talking to you, my dear believers, brothers and sisters. Yes, if someone else is going to cry because you have done some injustice to them, God will never keep quiet. God is not God of partiality. You know how he judged King David, right? He was the beloved, most favorite guy for David. God is definitely David, more than Moses. King David is like a chocolate boy for God. Turn your Bible with me to 1 Kings chapter 21 verses 1 to 4. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite and uh, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth saying, give me your vineyard. See, he is not even an Israelite. God need not even pay attention to the cry of that man, Naboth. You understand what I am saying? That's why I am telling you, if someone is going to tell you, you are a Christian, therefore be careful with another Christian, don't touch him. How about towards a people, person belonging to other religion? You can be unfair and God will not take an account because Christian to other religion doesn't go well. Please, quit this nonsense. You, everyone are equal before the sight of God and all are your brothers and your sisters. Never have that religious discrimination, cultural discrimination, gender discrimination, language discrimination, skin color discrimination. Devil did not manufacture anyone and send them to earth. God creates everyone and all are equal before God. Right? So I have spoke to Naboth saying, give me your vineyard that I may have it for a a vegetable garden. It's a decent task. No problem with that. Right? I have says that, you know, why don't you sell it to me? I'll give whatever price you demand. I'll give it, man. No problem. It's a gentleman conversation. Nothing wrong. So far, nothing wrong. Because it is near next to my house. It's another very uh, genuine player. You know, I want to expand my compound and therefore your land is there next to my compound. Why don't you sell it to me? And uh, I'll give you whatever price you demand. And in fact, if you need more, you can ask. And for it, I will give you a vineyard better than it. it. This is also a good conversation. Or it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. Very good conversation. So, one thing I want, to want you to take a note. Ahab's heart is quite gentle. Ahab is a kind of an innocent guy. And in fact, I, he is someone who is worthy to be cheated quite easily. Very innocent fellow. In fact, he doesn't even know how to get into all this kind of wicked desires and all that. He was not a wicked man, technically. I want you to know this. Some of you listening to me are also innocent. You, you have been completely biased and ruled by someone else. I don't want to name the name of that person <clears throat> or the relationship I had with that person. I was there for quite some time, almost like a decade. Someone was ruling over me. Not my wife. <laughs> Don't look at my wife, right? She is a gem of a person. She is an angel of God. Yeah, I love her. And God gave her to me. Um, and that's a different testimony which I told you before. I had to pray about this three and a half years. Every Saturday in fasting and prayer from Proverbs 31 verses 10 to 31. I'll tell you what. God blessed me with a virtuous wife more than that Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. Some of the youngsters, teenagers listening to me, 
pray for virtuous husbands pray for virtuous wives and god is going to bless you right yeah my wife may not be someone like that aishwarya roy or some um, some cine actresses and all that have you no, forget the movie star names you have no idea when they wake up early in the morning from their bed how they look like i leave it there again this is not about aishwarya roy i'm not commenting on her but she's a most prominent actress right and a superstar i'm just telling for an example yeah but then she is beautiful in her heart all right it's not my wife but i was a different person that ruled over me and made me to take all wrong decisions injected law injected lot of uh, malicious thoughts and from the bible that person convinced me what you do is right and several years went like that and god spoke through my wife he rebuked me he admonished me he corrected me yes because of that person we had certain fights quarrels between me and my wife we had some arguments disagreements and i was not the reason she was not the reason but someone else was the reason and pushed me towards the side of passive aggression towards the side of negativity ended up making all sorts of bad accusations bad decisions lost my peace lost my happiness my joy always living in fear jittery fear for my future will i continue to live my life with my wife and will i have this or not the, the the intention of that person was to ensure that i dominate and i rule over everything which was not my inten- intention at all and i was biased and now when i look back oh what an idiot i was i have would regret from hell today what an idiot i was yeah i was actually doing good but someone biased me someone kind of uh, what is they influenced me negative influences this guy is a very good example you see in verse number 2 1 kings verse number 2 21 and verse number 2 there was nothing wrong in this conversation nothing wrong it's a gentle negotiation it's a gentleman talk and verse number 3 and naboth said to ahab the lord forbid that i should give the inheritance of my fathers to you naboth disagrees so i have went into his house sullen and displeased because of the word which naboth the jezreelite had spoken to him for he had said i will not give you the inheritance of my fathers and he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food who taught him this habit who taught him this jezebel his wife why because she lives under one principle if you desire something go to any extent to achieve that desire to win that desire not no talks about doing it in god's ways or devil's ways ultimately you must be the winner there are many people who are winners in this world just examine and see you will find lots and lots of loopholes and dark spots they did not become a winner in god's ways you need to run the race according to the rules of god paul the apostle made that statement very clear in the epistles else you are disqualified in the white throne judgment day you will be disqualified a uh, person talking in verse number 2 versus verse number 4 there is a significant difference it's actually like north pole to south pole there is no connectivity isn't it a gentleman making a conversation okay fine brother you don't agree fine keep it with you no problem anything beyond that will be tied up with something called as greed and greed is one of the seven dreadful sins of the bible and who can get into greed a person who is passively aggressive passive aggression a person who is in passive aggression will get into this why because he doesn't care about anything he is aggressive to achieve uh, to to win his desire over his neighbor's wife or to cover his neighbor's wife or to you know to grab that neighbor's property you see some people you, you know they will be spreading all sorts of tantrums and heresies about their neighbors after they got to know that the neighbor is trying to sell his property therefore they will ensure that he is not selling it for a good price at all they will be that spoils but i was there also hmm. i was there also one of my ancestors property was trying to sell and 
the neighbors literally spoke very very bad about that and uh, did not get the price that i was supposed to and then finally i have to let it let go may god judge them okay and i'm not angry at all because i only pity them because god's anger is towards them not my anger and if god forgives them i will be very happy okay leave that besides right and this guy is turning his face which means what he's desperate is desperate desperation leads to exasperation exasperation leads to all sorts of uh, negative aggression and negative aggression will lead you towards all sort of all sorts of bad decisions bad decisions will take you to the wrong side of your life and when you are on the wrong side of your life devil is your partner <laughs> okay this is how the chain works the workflow works but jezebel his wife came to him and said to him why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food i will have to read the uh, uh, whole paraphrase until 16 okay and you will know but jezebel his wife said the so she he said to her because i spoke to nabat the jezreelite said to him said to me uh, sorry said to him give me your vineyard for money or else if it pleases you i will give you another vineyard for it and he answered i will not give you my vineyard and verse number 7 then jezebel his wife said to him you now exercise authority over israel arise and eat food and let your heart be cheerful i will give you the vineyard of nabat the jezreelite she is talking about very important thing which you should take a note misuse your powers man it's not exercising your authority exercising your authority is towards the enemies of your state or country but he is a citizen of your state that too is your neighbor bible says very clearly love your neighbor as much as you love yourself matthew 22 39 it's not exercising authority this is how the devil talks you know to eve no no you will never die don't worry no huh? it's not about it's not about that death it's 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 translated to awareness and you will receive that knowledge and you will be more than god that's what god meant as death <laughs> god literally meant something very clearly you will die on that day spiritually and after that you will be physically dead and death is not part of my design adam and eve but you have intrude sorry you are the reason for the intrusion of death on this planet earth for this reason i don't know whether there will be heaven or hell i believe there will be in heaven why because after that they never commit that sin that was the only sin they commit they lived for 900 year plus years or something like that and they lived in repentance one one sin they committed yes it's a terrible crime but god would forgive them i trust in his mercies but i don't know for sure knowingly they committed a crime to everyone pays that price jezebel's wife said to him exercise your authority no no misuse your power that's the original meaning so he so she wrote letters in ahab's names you see how idiot he was he is the king and wife rules the kingdom there are many pastors their wives run the church and that is the definite thing in uh, the early age christianity uh, revelation chapter 3 you will see the church of at uh, theater uh, you know the the lady was running the the women's jezebel who calls yourself a prophetess and so you know, so the pastor's wife was running the church and god wants that yeah see when you are desperate you are negative you are in the passive aggression passive aggression will shut down your brains your brains won't work man you will not be a good man you will not be a man of good heart so she wrote letters in ahab's name sealed them with the seal and sent the letters to the elders and this idiot doesn't even know what she wrote but that blood is in his hands because why somebody uses your name and you do nothing about it or mis- misuses your name you know that and you do nothing about it whatever consequences happens the other person who misused your name will be spared i mean he will also be judged but then more punishment will arise against you yes a noble who were dwelling in the city with naboth and she wrote in the letter saying proclaim a fast and seat naboth with high honor among the people and see two men scoundrels before him to bear witness against him saying you have blasphemed and god and the king then take him up and stone him that he may die and verse number 11 12 13 i will skip because uh, I, you know such a thing happened then they sent they, then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones they did likewise they killed the man 
my time is up that's why i'm rushing a bit then they sent to jezebel saying naboth has been stoned and is dead now this blood is in whose hands ahab's hands hmm? ahab didn't do anything his wife only did know who approved it who was saying silent i know a man who allowed his wife to do all the spoil sports within the family and the family has been torn into pieces she killed everyone's peace and this man now pretends as if he's innocent what can i do you are the man of the house yes if you are if you disagree then wear a sari and give your uh, dhoti and your uh, your pants and shirts to your wife and say that you know i am a eunuch sorry i'm i'm going little hard against men of this kind what kind of human being you are and now this guy pretends saying that i i don't know anything ask my wife and all that and that lady never repents and came to pass when jezebel heard that naboth has been stoned and was dead that jezebel said to ahab arise take possession of the vineyard of naboth the jezreelite when he refused to give you for money for uh, he is not alive but dead so it was when ahab heard that naboth was dead that ahab went got up and went down to take possession of the vineyard and naboth the jezreelite then the word of the lord came to elijah saying arise go down to the meet ahab king of israel uh, who lives in samaria there he is in the vineyard of naboth when he has gone down to take possession of it you shall speak to him saying thus says the lord have you murdered and also taken possession verse number 19 1 kings 21 19 god requires an account of every innocent blood you shed every idle word that you talk every useless word you talk every abuse Uh, abusive language you use every foul language you use for which the person do not deserve applies to me applies to you applies to everyone be careful and if you're a man of passive aggression right you will frequently get into these kind of mistakes and habits time to quit that now who killed neighbor jezebel now who is supposed to give an account of that death ahab why because she used ahab's name she misused his name and he allowed he was just watching what can i do my wife is not listening to me fine you go to hell and your wife will join you there but you will get a worse punishment than your wife both of them will go to hell god bless you heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity this sound of warning thank you for alerting us yeah we need that we need that more often thank you father in jesus name we pray god bless you subscribe if you have not you will start receiving automatic notifications and share this video details uh, uh, or the channel information to your friends and whomever you know uh, it's very very important um, to spread the word of god we are not into religious conviction but we want to lead the people towards a life of salvation probably they are heading towards the wrong destination right and and pray for all the ministers of god evangelists pastors missionaries everyone pray for them right and prophets a lot of false prophets are there pray for them also because there is a large bunch of crowd going after them pray for my ministries also don't forget me please and likewise if you have a prayer request don't run to anyone you run to your abba father in heaven yeah in the name of his son jesus make your request known to him seek the lord from the secret place he will reward you publicly he will perfect all your concerns but when you pray pray with all faith believe what you have prayed you will receive because with men it is impossible but with god all things are possible and his ears are always open to your prayers matthew 656 matthew 1926 matthew 2122 philippians 46 john 1414 uh, psalms 138 and verse 8 isa 51 and 2 uh, are the verses that i want to give which depicts the principles of prayers and they are very important for you to understand God bless you and I'll meet you soon in the next session. Thank you. Take care.